विक्रम साराभाई द साइंटिस्ट फॉर एवर लेट एस रीड अबाउट वन सच फेमस इंडियन साइंटिस्ट हु मेड अ नेम नॉट ओनली फॉर हिमसेल्फ बट ऑल्सो फॉर द कंट्री लेट अस रीड नो नेशन कैन प्रोग्रेस If science and technology is not understood or applied by the people, what use is science if it cannot benefit man? Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, one of the renowned personalities who worked for the formation of a strong science policy in India, was born on 12 August 1919 at Ahmedabad in Gujarat in a well-to-do business family. His family was famous. for its philanthropic efforts and this had a strong influence on young vikram he learned to recognize the needs of the economically and socially disadvantaged people from an early age among other things the family owned was a school for small children called retreat this school was not an ordinary school this school was special it used a different approach for teaching students in addition to books the school used other tools like toys games etc for developing the minds of young children vikram sarabhai started his education in this school it is said that we can get an idea of the future of a great personality from their childhood vikram was no different he was a brilliant student he had a great memory he was able to memorize letters of the alphabet numbers nursery rhymes etc without taxing his mind this cast a strong impression on the mind of his teachers they were able to get a glimpse of sarabhai's future they declared that one day he would certainly make them proud his parents were delighted to hear this Vikram's fascination with science started in high school. For Vikram, science was a fascinating mystery that encouraged him to look for solutions. He spent hours upon hours conducting experiments and thinking about science. At this young age, children are generally interested in comics and story books, but Vikram was interested in the lives of great scientists like all parents Vikram's parents also wanted to know about his career plans. So one day his father asked him, "Vikram, what would you like to do on growing up?" "I would like to do research in science," replied Vikram. This made Vikram's family very happy. Money was not an issue and Vikram's parents provided him the best of everything that was needed for success in education. After completing high school, Vikram enrolled at the Gujarat College in Ahmedabad at the Department of Physics. During those days, Cambridge University in Britain was one of the coveted seats of advanced studies. Students from all over the world traveled to Cambridge and Oxford to gain knowledge. Vikram also decided to attend the university to pursue his higher studies. So in 1937 Vikram left India for England there he joined St John's College at the Cambridge University This was the period in Vikram's life that influenced him most at Cambridge he was at the center of the latest developments in the field of physics he was able to learn about the latest breakthroughs discoveries and inventions happening in the world His thirst for knowledge and deep understanding of physics impressed both his teachers and classmates. In fact, his classmates regularly approached him with their problems and difficulties. Vikram always provided clear and interesting solutions to them. His friends were amazed at this and would joke and ask Vikram to become their teacher. But Vikram always smiled and told them that there was too much for him to learn at the age of 20 vikram acquired a degree in physics and mathematics then 
the Second World War broke out during the summer of 1940. The whole of Europe, including Britain, was in turmoil. The entire human civilization was in danger due to the actions of Hitler, the dictator of Germany. Due to this turmoil, Vikram returned to India. Before independence, the Indian Institute of Science at Bangalore was one of the prominent research institutions of India. The Nobel Prize winner, C. V. Raman, was the director of the institution at that time. He had a student, Dr. Homi Baba, who was later instrumental in starting the first atomic power station in India. Vikram admired these two scientists greatly and they significantly influenced his life. Vikram was interested in working under Professor Raman, so he joined the Institution for Research. Vikram researched cosmic rays under C. V. Raman. Vikram was intrigued by cosmic rays. Cosmic rays are fast-moving, extremely small particles coming from outer space. When these rays enter the Earth's atmosphere, they hit the air and produce showers of electrons. Electrons are charged particles and appear like the dust particles seen within rays in a dark room. Vikram was not interested in making money. He was interested in contributing to society. Therefore, after completing his research, he joined the Meteorological Department at Pune, today's Pune. The department was responsible for researching weather and its behavior. Vikram enjoyed his time here, but his heart lay in cosmic research. He wanted to unravel the mysteries of the universe, so he dreamed about a research institution for studying cosmic research. The opportunity came in 1943. Vikram became part of a project for researching cosmic rays. He went to the Himalayas for conducting experiments. He enjoyed his time in the great Himalayas. Here, he realized that the mountains are the best place for the study of cosmic rays. He made a suggestion to the government of India about this, but nothing came out of it. In 1947, the Cambridge University awarded Vikram a doctorate degree for his research into cosmic rays. Vikram had not given up on his dream of starting a research institution for studying cosmic rays. After obtaining the doctorate degree, he began working towards making his dream come true. He met with many prominent personalities of the time. All of them were impressed with his idea. His efforts paid off and some people agreed to provide him with space at the science institution in Ahmedabad for conducting his research. This was a humble beginning of a great dream. Vikram was very happy with these turn of events. The research institution was begun with three research scholars, an office assistant and a carpenter who also worked as a mechanic. There was always shortage of money, equipment and apparatus. Slowly, people came to know about the laboratory and money started pouring in through different avenues. Finally, in February 1952, the foundation stone of a separate laboratory for researching cosmic rays was laid by Vikram's teacher and mentor, Professor C. V. Raman. At the ceremony, Dr. Raman said, Vikram's efforts in the path of scientific development are indeed praiseworthy. We must all give him our support and help. The work on the construction of the building continued day and night. Finally, in April 1954, the building was completed. India's first Prime Minister, Jawaharlal Nehru, inaugurated the research laboratory. Nehru was a great believer in science. He wanted to see India at the forefront of scientific progress. The laboratory was named the Physical Research Laboratory. Today, it is one of the premier research institutes of our country. The laboratory increased the administrative work for Vikram, yet he always made time for his research on cosmic rays. He never gave up on the idea of a research station in the Himalayas. In 1955, the Physical Research Laboratory 
set up a research station at Gulmarg in Kashmir. It was the first of its kind in India. Later, the government also set up a research laboratory at Gulmarg. All of this was made possible due to the persistent efforts of Vikram Sarabhai. Theoretical knowledge in itself is not enough. It should be of benefit to the general population. Vikram worked in this area. For him, scientific pursuits were meaningless if they did not improve the lives of the human beings. Dr. Vikram Sarabhai left the world on 30 December 1971 in a hotel on Kovalam Beach near the Thumba Pocket Range in Kerala. He passed away but his contribution lives on till date. India gained an important place in the global field of science and technology due to the contributions made by Dr. Vikram Sarabhai.